When it was announced that McLaren were going to be racing in the 2019 Indy 500, hopes were very high for McLaren succeeding. And also hopes for Fernando Alonso completing the Triple Crown were very high as well. But after their failure to qualify for the 2019 Indy 500, it has become another sorry episode in the last 10 years for McLaren and has gone a long way in embarrassing this great team. So in today's video, I'm going to detail how it fell apart and just how many mistakes led to them failing to qualify for this famous race. So if you want to know how exactly they failed to make the Indy 500 of 2019, make sure to check out this video. But to kick things off, let's start off with the timeline of events that led from McLaren's announcement that they were going to be competing in the Indy 500 in 2019 until they failed to qualify. So on the 10th of November 2018, McLaren announced that they would be competing at the 2019 Indy 500 and they did this for two reasons. One, to further the brand of McLaren in the United States and to help their brand if they did go on to win the race and also to help Fernando Alonso try and achieve the Triple Crown. Because after Fernando Alonso won the 24 hour of Le Mans race in 2018, he was very keen to get the Triple Crown done as soon as possible by 2019 with a victory at Indianapolis. Then a few days later, Bob Fernley, formerly of Force India, was announced as the leader of the Indy 500 program. Now, at the time, this was a good decision because Bob Fernley is a good person within motorsport, has plenty of experience and also did have experience in IndyCar racing back in the 1980s. Then as preparations were ramping up for McLaren, they announced Chevrolet as their engine supplier for the famous race. And finally, by April the 8th, 2019, McLaren revealed the car that was going to be going for victory in America. As I'll get onto later on, this reveal was later than it should have been and also later than expected. But then just a day later at the Texas Motor Speedway, McLaren for the first time tested their IndyCar. And for a first test, everything went about okay. And then on April the 24th, official testing at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway began and McLaren turned up on time. But as we're going to learn later, around this time is when the issues started to arise. Then on May the 14th, 2019, the effort to practice and then qualify for the Indy 500 began. But McLaren and Fernando Alonso on day two of practicing suffered a massive blow as Fernando had a big crash at turn three, which completely destroyed the car and put McLaren out of action for two full days. Not because the McLaren car was that badly damaged, but because of another reason, and again, we will get onto that later on. Then, as we got to the weekend after a troublesome week for McLaren, they failed to initially qualify for the Indy 500, but still had the opportunity in the final shootout to just about make the back end of the grid. But even in the shootout, they failed to make the Indy 500 and the disaster was now complete. And due to this failure, Bob Fernley, the head of the program, was immediately fired by McLaren. But after the failure to qualify for the Indy 500, Zach Brown, the CEO of McLaren, was quite frank with how McLaren failed to make this race. By saying, I don't think we came into this arrogant, I think we were underprepared, we didn't deserve to be in the race, and it's our own fault. But what were the precise issues which caused McLaren to fail so hard? Well, get ready guys, because I have a list of these literally comedic errors by such a massive company and great team. First off, when the Texas Motor Speedway opened for testing, McLaren were not ready to go to the track and start testing because their car had not been revealed yet and thus was not ready. So that's why earlier I said the McLaren car was late in it being revealed. Then a week before the test, Zach Brown had to personally secure a steering wheel from Cosworth for them to use in the test. 
you would think McLaren would remember to put a steering wheel on a racing car. It's it's a pretty important area of a racing car, the steering wheel. If you don't have a steering wheel, it's not a racing car. How McLaren left it this late to secure a steering wheel is unimaginable. I mean, you think they would have noticed that there wasn't a steering wheel ready a few weeks before they were about to start testing, but no, they didn't. Then came something extremely farcical. So McLaren purchased their car for the Indy 500 from Carlin, but when it arrived to McLaren, the car was not the right type of orange. It wasn't the happier orange that, of course, McLaren are now famous for with their F1 cars. And, of course, that is their classic color from back when they first started as McLaren. So they sent it back to be repainted in the correct color. But when Fernando Alonso crashed during practice at Indy, that's why they missed two days of testing or practicing because the car that was being repainted, the spare car, was not ready because the painting had not finished yet. Now I do see McLaren's point in the car not being the correct color that they ordered, but at the end of the day, does it really matter? And by the way, when it comes to this whole papier orange color that McLaren have, I get that it's the color they had at the very start of their history as a racing team, but for me, that isn't even their most famous or classic color. The most famous and classic color of a McLaren for me is the mostly white and red McLaren of the 80s and most of the 90s. Now, I know they can't go for that because that was mostly because of their sponsor, Marlboro, but it's not even their most successful or best color. So why are they being so picky over something so, so small? I, I, I see their point, but it does come across as a very picky and selective thing to me. Also, during testing at Texas and Indy, they had an employee took off the team due to repeated electrical issues. So they couldn't even get the reliability of this car right. And then came qualifying for the Indy 500, which got even worse for McLaren. As on their first qualifying run, it was ruined by a puncture for Fernando Alonso because the team could not detect a puncture before he went out because the team had bought incorrect tyre sensors. Now, in case you don't know, tyre sensors are supposed to detect a puncture before the driver can inside the car. Considering that this type of equipment is so commonplace in racing, I can't believe McLaren bought the incorrect tyre sensors. It's unbelievable how amateur that is but after missing out in qualifying the first time mclaren went to practice with a completely new setup and the issues and mistakes continued for this team as during the frantic events of setting up the car in a much different way they made a mistake in converting inches to the metric system that mclaren uses meaning that when they were practicing the car was scraping along the ground causing the car to be even worse than it was before they tried this new setup. Now that type of mistake is the type of mistake you make when you're starting to panic and now you can't do the basic things that you should be able to do as a racing team. Because something like that is so basic for people at McLaren that are engineers working on a car. And to cap off the circus, McLaren had to borrow other parts of other cars from other teams down the pit lane to try and qualify for the Indy 500. For a racing team, whether you're McLaren or any racing team that is serious, for you to make those types of errors is so, so comical and so, so bad. And I'm afraid McLaren have no excuses whatsoever for this disaster. But how do McLaren build on from here? Do they go to the Indy 500 again in 2020? Or do they now go off in a different direction? Well, let's start off with Fernando Alonso. Now, he has completed two parts of the three-part Triple Crown and will be desperate to complete the Triple Crown as soon as possible. And the only way I can see him doing so is 
if he enters IndyCar full-time for the entirety of 2020, not just entering that race. So for me, Fernando has to enter IndyCar full-time because I don't think entering one race per season with a team like McLaren, who clearly can't get their act right when it comes to IndyCar, I just don't think it's going to work. And I think going into IndyCar with a proper team that knows what it's doing would set up Fernando's chances a lot better than it would be with McLaren. Now with McLaren, they have two choices. They can either go for the Indy 500 again in 2020 or concentrate everything on Formula 1. In my opinion, they should concentrate everything on Formula 1 because Formula 1 is what they are about and also so far in 2019 McLaren are having a great season compared to the seasons they've had you know back in 2018, 17, 2016, 2015 so for me they should concentrate on Formula 1 because that is where they are best at and they're doing very well there compared to how they've done in the past and I just don't think they should be really helping Fernando Alonso any more in his quest to complete the Triple Crown. But if McLaren are going to go to the Indy 500 in 2020, what they need to do is announce they're going to do it a lot earlier than they did back in 2018. Announce you're going to race at the Indy 500 for next year around, I don't know, August or September of this year, and then get testing a lot earlier. So you are a lot better prepared for that race because it's clear to see McLaren were not well prepared for that race. They only started testing about a month before practice and qualifying for this race began. And to me, I'm sure the American viewers in the comments, uh, if, if I am wrong, you'll correct me, but it feels like to me the Indy 500 is that type of race that you've really got to put a lot of testing and practice in if you are going to really succeed at that type of race. So if they are going to, McLaren have got to announce soon that they're going to race again and they've got to start practicing and testing a lot sooner than they did with this effort, this failed and pathetic effort in 2019. But if McLaren decide not to go back to the Indy 500 ever again, it will be a lesson to any team out there that decides to possibly enter the Indy 500 as a one-off entry that you cannot take things for granted if you are a big company and you are a great team. The Indy 500 is a very tough race and it is very tough to get things right. And as McLaren have just showed, if you don't get things right, you can be made to look like complete fools. But for McLaren, this just goes down as another comedic tale to add to the other ones over the past few years for this team that has definitely gone backwards compared to how they were 10 or 15 years ago. But anyway, guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to comment down below what you thought of this video and also comment down below what did you think of McLaren's Indy 500 campaign? And if they are to go back, what can McLaren do better? And do you think McLaren should go back? And also don't forget to subscribe and like this video for more content like this. But guys, until next time, it has been me, Kazra HD. Goodbye.